Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 12. With the flywheel mounted on a small brass mandrel, I'm now able to turn the centre bosses to match the hole in the middle. This is a very simple job, but well worth doing. The flywheel looks so much better now when it is attached to the crankshaft and spinning. In this clip, now the writing's disappeared, you can really see what the problem was. The hole in the flywheel, which is now occupied by the brass mandrel, is in the centre. But the centre boss and the spokes and the internal part of the flywheel is definitely not concentric. And this is more noticeable when I rotate the flywheel. You can see just how out of round it is. The curious thing, as I mentioned in the last episode, is that the hole in the centre and the outer edge of the flywheel both run true. But because the rest of the flywheel, between the centre and the outside edge, is not quite where it should be, this is why it doesn't look too good. What I'm doing here is drilling a centre hole in the brass mandrel. The reason for this is so that I can fit a live centre to firmly hold the flywheel against the chuck. But with a large live centre in place, it was difficult to film the turning process. I'm actually cleaning up the centre boss using a chamfer tool. This is not ideal, I only use this to show the principle and allow me to get a good shot of the process. It's worth mentioning that I'm taking extremely fine cuts. And to be perfectly honest, the finish of the boss isn't particularly brilliant, but it doesn't need to be. Any lines on the boss will be great for a key for the paint. After two or three passes, the centre boss is starting to look much better. I was surprised at the amount of passes to make this boss round. Even after turning the boss several times, there was still some of the rough casting showing. As you can see here when I rotate the flywheel. You will notice that the outer part of the flywheel is fairly concentric. This is a good thing. A word of warning though, if you're doing a job like this, use a proper mandrel, because I couldn't turn the outer part of the flywheel on this short piece of brass. If I'd have needed to do that, the mandrel would have been a good bit longer, made from silver steel and lock tighted to the flywheel. Now the centre boss is machined and it's looking a lot better. I took the brass mandrel out of the chuck turned it round and centre drilled the end. And this live centre presses the flywheel against the chuck, making sure everything is in line. Another piece of brass doesn't look very concentric at the moment, but it doesn't matter. As long as the pressure of the live centre holds the flywheel against the chuck jaws, it's perfectly in line. I've also changed the cutting tool for this operation. The chamfer tool was not ideal, but this one's fine. Using this arrangement of the live center putting pressure on the brass rod and holding the flywheel securely against the chuck jaws, I can actually take deeper cuts. The job's nearly done and now both center bosses are the same size and perfectly concentric with the hole in the middle. When doing jobs like this, you have to be really careful not to machine a chunk out of the spokes. You need to quickly stop the tool from advancing at the end of the travel. This is about right. Now I need to remove the mandrel from the flywheel. Very simple, turn it round in the chuck and press out the mandrel starting off with the live centre. I thought I'd better mention that the piece of brass is not tightly clamped in the chuck anymore because otherwise if I did that I couldn't push it out of the flywheel. After dislodging the mandrel, I then re-tightened it in the chuck and used hand pressure to withdraw the flywheel from it. Now it's time to troop the spokes and the inner rim of the flywheel. So what I'm doing is using my digital caliper to find out which is the thickest point. This gives me some idea where I need to remove metal from the inside of the flywheel. This flywheel is never going to be perfect, but then again it is a casting, so you don't need it to be perfect. This part of the inner edge is slightly thicker than the rest, 
First of all, though, before I start, I'm rolling the flywheel on a ruler just to make sure that this is the heaviest point. I'm using the ruler just as a flat surface because even though the bench is level, the surface of the bench is not very even. After quite a bit of needle filing using this half round file, it started to look a good bit better. Time to fit it to the engine and give it a try. This long grub screw does need shortening, I am aware of that. The physical appearance and the concentricity of the flywheel is much improved. I'm going to run the engine for a while and I'll change its position so you can see that the flywheel is running quite true on the outer edge. And really, the outer edge was always okay, but now the rest of the flywheel looks much better. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'd like to take this opportunity to show a big problem with reciprocating steam engines. This is nothing to do with the flywheel, it's the up and down motion of the piston and the crosshead. When I sit the engine on its base, the flywheel is looking a lot better on the outside and on the centre boss. Now I need to paint the flywheel again, but this time it's going to be red because I've actually sold this steam plant and I asked the customer what colour he would like the flywheel. I will paint the flywheel using some buffer beam red paint very shortly. That's it for now though, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.